Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoko, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Wednesday, May 11th, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time 2022. Strong magnitude 6-point earthquake strikes deep, and that's good news for those on the surface, as snow models showing heavy snow in the Rockies through the end of May. But the big story, severe thunderstorms to hammer the plains with hail, damaging winds, tornadoes through Friday. Keep calm. It's boom time. Multiple rounds of severe thunderstorms will erupt in the plains through Friday. The most widespread severe thunderstorms will be in the northern plains. Large hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes are possible. More rain will soak the already flooded Red River Valley. Holy macarally. Wait a minute. Hail rained down in golf ball sizes, and Tiger Woods was nowhere to be found. That was in Wisconsin. Traverse City thought it was experiencing some global warming goodness when the temperatures dropped 31 degrees in just 10 minutes. And that might be of a record. <laughs> I mean, can, that's, that's quite a drop. Precipitous at best. Now let's talk about some of the biggest fires on the North American continent. Hermit's Peak and Calf Canyon fires, May 11th update. Total acreage, 236,939 acres burned. Containment just at 33%. And wow, we have to drive through this in just two days. Let's take a look. Here is the state line. Here is our current position right there. We're going to jump on 84 and head south through Chama, Tierra Amarilla, through Abiqui or Abiqui. And we're going to go right through the Sierra Pelado fire in the Calf Canyon and Hermit's Peak. As we head to Ruidoso, New Mexico. Now, the Calf Canyon fire is massive. And in fact, the Calf Canyon and Hermit's Peak fire are now one fire. Which span Chacon, the city of Chacon, Holloman, Mora, Salpeo, and Hot Springs. Approaching Arriba. Arriba, andale, Speedy Gonzalez, and Las Vegas, New Mexico, not Nevada. But the good news is that this area that is burned is extremely rural. The bad news is that, well, thousands of people own ranches in this area that have been completely destroyed. So our prayers go out to them that this uh, wind will die down, and it's looking like in a few more days it will. And that the fire will secede and not reach any of those major cities, which aren't that major, but around here they are. Treasure Valley Freeze Warning has cherry orchards working through the night to protect crops. They're probably misting the trees to try to keep the cherries frozen. At 28 degrees, gem orchards in Emmett will begin to start losing its fruit just ahead of harvest. And this is just one more story of crop loss and failure. And we have a few more lined up. The soil is very muddy, and it's like Play-Doh. May showers bring, bring, <laughs> bring bad news for crops. Portland, Oregon, temperatures have been below average for the month of April so far. May, with May being quite wet, it's not good for new, news for crops. Portland has yet to meet its average rainfall, but the wet weather has really slowed down the ability to plant and grow crops like Christmas trees at Farrow Farms. The soil is very muddy. And it's like Play-Doh. <laughs> Not good for Christmas trees. I didn't even know that was a crop. Morel mushroom boom in Iowa. That doesn't look very boomy. That looks like a pretty small morel. When I just saw some reports of 11 and 12 inch morels being harvested by young children. But in fact, in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, the warm weather has finally helped the morel mushroom season arrive in force in Iowa. The Iowa DNR posted that officers have spotted morels growing. Now. The mushrooms typically spring up in the spring in the ding-ding when the moist soil and the weather warms during the day, but still cool at night. And there we see the elusive morel poking up through the leaf debris. Do you have a morel patch? Now let's talk about tough farming conditions and supply chain issues creating a potato shortage in a price hike. We just planted 35 pounds of seed potatoes right outside. And my voice might be breaking up because of this video which is why we hate the internet. It's filled with so much garbage and so many ads. And, and we have ad blockers on. It's that unwatchable. 
Severe thunderstorms continue over the upper Midwest. Fire weather con concerns persist. Now, severe thunderstorms will continue across the upper Midwest into Thursday with all hazards possible. Fire weather concerns persist across eastern Colorado and the south central high plains with elevated to critical conditions. Now, this region continues to be extremely dry with drought conditions and winds remaining gusty during peat heating hours. I mean, it's been blowing like I've never seen outside. And we have a red flag warning tonight until 11 p.m. Holy macaroni. Let's take a look at the GFS model for total snow. And we'll just see how some of this is going to lay out in the coming days. Here's Thursday through Friday. There you can see the snow in the Rockies where it's going to be produced, especially the Cascades. Sunday and then Monday and then Tuesday and Wednesday. And take a look at Wednesday in British Columbia. We have a system moving in, and that's going to bring more snow down into the Rockies through the end of May. Wow, good news for high up in the mountains. This could be a secondary flush for the river season that we need because I'm going to be missing it all because I'll be in Ruidoso as the river peaks here in Pagosa. Now, a strong magnitude 6.8 earthquake, 159 kilometers northwest of Julio, Department of Dr. Manuel Belgrano, Julia in Argentina. That's a lot to say, but there was a big boomer in Argentina, and then we have some aftershocks. Now, the good news about this quake is it was exceptionally deep. The quake hit an intermediate to considerable depth of 235 kilometers beneath the epicenter. That is blot echo depth, and very little movement is felt up at the surface at this depth, which is good news. Uh, almost no damage um, or any injuries reported from this major earthquake. Now, the monitoring service identified a second report uh, in Australia, which listed the earthquake at 6.6. So it's anyone's guess how far they want to downgrade this. Regardless, the earth is rumbling in a big way. Now, not only that, we have a quake up here in Yellowstone. I'm sure there's special events and live streams on Mary Greeley and other channels fear-mongering about the end of the world. But nothing could be further from the truth. This is a big lull in 4.55 magnitude earthquake activity in Yellowstone. So nothing significant happening in Yellowstone whatsoever except normal activity. And you'll, you'll notice here... Then on the official report, it says Yellowstone Volcano, small earthquake. In fact, 4.2 is quite small for Yellowstone. If we saw a six or greater earthquake, we would, he'd, <laughs> we would be taking heed. Mark my words. Now, an M4.2, 36 kilometers south of Silvergate, Montana, is in fact small and insignificant. means very little. And according to the University of Utah seismograph stations that reported the light earthquake on, at 4.2 at 7.32 a.m. on May 11th, the epicenter of the shock was 23 miles northeast of the east entrance of Yellowstone. And anyone who felt it, they would like a report on it. And they would also like to say that it's insignificant. Now, what is significant is the uptick at Mount St. Helens continues to grow by another earthquake over a 30-day period. We had a small flurry of two small seismic tremors. And that continues to add to the uptick in the last 15 days. So just a heads up there. Reykjanes Ridge also rumbling as the seismicity seems to be moving around like a whirling dervish. And then this seismic swarm happening in a new region earlier today after another seismic swarm at the tip here occurred back here where quakes got as high as 3.2 magnitude. Now we have a new flurry of activity with no significant quakes. We have here at 2.3 but a hundred or so quakes in this region. This is all indicative of magma intrusion, as is corroborated here at IcelandGeology.net yesterday. Earthquake activity in a new location at the ridge. They were talking about the tip here, but it is slowly migrated over to this region here. Now, a new location in the volcano Reykjanes. This location, 11 kilometers south of Keflavik International Airport, is also close to a village named Hanfia. Hafnia. Hafnia. Now, the largest earthquake in this swarm had a magnitude of 3.0 and 3.2, as we suggested, and the second earthquake was felt in the area. A lot of smaller quakes also took place at this location, and then subsequently, a secondary flurry of activity 12 hours later in a new location. So, a lot is afoot in Iceland, and we're keeping a close eye on it for you. Cleveland volcano in the Aleutian Islands. Volcanic alert. 
level raised to yellow. And this is because of that small yellow dot you see glowing in the calendar at the top. The Alaska Volcano Observatory raised the alert level for the volcano to yellow as elevated surface temperatures as well as sulfur dioxide emissions have been detected in satellite data over the last few days. And we'll take a closer look at that from SAT. And this is from Sentinel-2 L1C in false color. The blue would be the snow. The yellow would be the thermal signature. So we have the official report from Cleveland here. Hazard notification system, or Hans, for volcanoes has raised the alert level to yellow. Current uh, alert level is advisory. Previous was unassigned. The current aviation code is yellow. And elevated surface temperatures and sulfur dioxide emissions have been detected in satellite data over the last couple of days, representing a departure from background activity. AVO is increasing the aviation color code uh, from whatever it was to yellow. Cleveland Volcano is monitored with limited real-time seismic network. The small network inhibits ABO's ability to detect precursory unrest that may lead to an explosive eruption, which is why they do this early. And people are getting squirrely as NASA finds the Tonga volcanic eruption effects reached space. Now, when the Honga Tonga Haipei uh, volcano erupted on January 15th, 2022, it sent an atmospheric shockwave and sonic booms, as well as tsunami waves around the world. Now, scientists are finding the volcano's effects also reach space, and it's quite significant. The volcano created one of the largest disturbances in space they have seen in the modern era, said Brian Harding, a physicist at the University of California. Berkeley, the lead author of the new paper discussing the findings, it's allowing to test the poorly understood connection between the atmosphere and space. Now, ICON launched in 2019 to identify how Earth's weather interacts with weather from space. Well, it's record-breaking. Um, the results are new and exciting look at how events on Earth can affect weather in space. And in fact, there was a major shockwave. When the volcano erupted, it pushed a giant plume of gas, water vapor, and dust into the sky. The explosion also created a large pressure disturbance in the atmosphere, leading to strong winds. And these are record-breaking winds from this boom. In fact, Icon clocked the wind speeds at up to 450 miles per hour as the eruption reached the ionosphere. Now, if you were a skydiver at that time and up in the ionosphere, well, not only would you need a spacesuit and supplementary oxygen, but you would have been blown away. And that is a boom. Goes X-ray flux. The Earth is getting the Earth. The Earth is getting shot by activity from the sun. As the sun reaches solar max, it's not really that max. It's quite min. Min. It's one of the smallest solar cycles in the last two hundred years. Uh, just slightly. Larger than cycle 24, the last solar cycle. But we did have some activity, an X flare 24 hours ago, and then a long duration M flare. Both of these are completely insignificant to Earth and have little or no effect whatsoever. Let's get with the first with the West Limb eruption. And this is that long duration M flare that just occurred and now we're just ramping off of after eight hours. This M flare lasted for about an hour and a half. Holy macaroni. Now, the good news, it was a limb eruption. Now, an eruption behind the west limb in the vicinity of AR-3004 was just observed. Now, this was picked up at M2.6. However, it was probably an X-10 flare off the backside because it had already turned around and shot away from us. This is the residual power that's just leaking around the limb at M2.6. Pretty impressive. Now, what it shows us is the Earth-facing quiet is still very strong. And as soon as any flaring spot faces us, well, it just gets shut down until some point when it actually fires. Well, and then it's boom time. Now, it's likely due to the larger fact that Sunspot is no longer in direct view, according to Solar Ham, which we just discussed. And a nice coronal mass ejection is almost certain. So let's take a look at some of the telemetry and just check their predictions. Holy macaroni! We got Lasco C2 on loop for the last 24 hours. And you can see here on the left side, the X flare, boom, and a filament destabilization. And then that 
M2.6 over the far end here. So we got boom, 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 boom. A lot of activity. None of it is heading directly towards us all far and away, which is very good news based on some of these pictures. Boom, 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 boom. Now, if this flare was directly Earth-facing, look at all this plasma coming out here. Wow, that is pretty significant. That was the X-flare and a filament destabilization there. A lot of solar plasma there. And one day that will be headed to, towards us and it will denote the end of the empire and the grid and modern living. Now, the total blood moon eclipse will rise over the U.S. this weekend, and we're imploring everyone to get out and look up. The moon will turn red during an eye-popping spectacle unlike any other in the night sky this year, as long as it isn't cloudy. The moon will pass through Earth's shadow for a total lunar eclipse on the night of May 15th and the 16th. And a lunar eclipse occurs when the moon is aligned with the Earth and the sun and basically throws a shadow over the moon. During totality, the moon appears red. And this is a blood red, super blood moon boom. Total lunar eclipse. The totality region you're looking at now is all of South America, most of North America, except for Northwest, which will see the total eclipse only at moonrise. Now, for the rest of us that are in the middle of the state or the east, it will begin early as soon as the sun sets and will last throughout midnight and uh, the early morning. Drug overdose deaths reached a record in 2021, fueled by fentanyl. Now, as long as two decades ago, many of the people I had worked with in the recovery movement well, are no longer with us because of the fentanyl polluting the illegal and illicit drug supply. And one of our top fans on the interwebs and social media, Christopher Robinson, succumbed to the fentanyl problem. He had eight months sober. He made the very bad decision to go back out once again, and he didn't make it. And according to his fiance, he passed away suddenly on May 9th. He did not have life insurance. He worked in a factory and drove a forklift. And he supported the channel for five years, sharing the work we do. And now we want to share his life. He had no money. He was just scraping by. And in just 48 hours, the family has raised $200 for his funeral. We hope if you have a little something, you could make a donation to the Christopher Robinson Fund, which is sponsored by Tamara Ann Singer, his partner of about a year now. And I believe they were going to get married. Squatterman 2022 is just a few hours away. The private petroglyph tour begins sometime on Saturday morning out in Rio do Sul, New Mexico. The convention is Sunday, the next day. Well, and tickets for the private tour are sold out. There's still tickets to the conference, but I'm pretty sure no one will be able to make it to this remote location. So those that did buy tickets and we'll, we'll be seeing you in just a day or so. But we can't wait. And that is a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world where it just gets more science fiction-y and crazier. You tune into the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News for clarity. We appreciate that. Become a Patreon and support the work we do. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And share this video and become a hero. We love you. And that's a boom. See you in the desert. Bing.